Can I ask you just, if it's possible to do an overview and just some brief comments of wisdom on the process of publishing a book? What's that process entail? What are the different options and what's your recommendation uh, for somebody that wants to write a book like yours, a nonfiction book that discovers something interesting about this world? So what I, I usually advise is follow the follow the process as is. Uh, don't try to reinvent. I think that, that happens a lot where you'll try to reinvent the way the publishing industry should work. Like this is kind of n- not like in a business model ways, but just like, this is what I want to do. I want to write a thousand words a day and I want to do this and I'm going to put it on the internet. And, the, and uh, the publishing industry is very specific about how it works. And so like when I got started writing books, which was at a very young age. So, you know, I, I sold my first book at the age of 21. The way I did that is I found the family friend uh, that was an agent and I said, I'm not trying to make you be my agent. Just explain to me how this works. Not just how the world works, but give me the hard truth about how would a 21-year-old, under what conditions could a 21-year-old sell a book and what would that look like? And she just explained it to me. Well, you'd have to do this and have to be a subject that it made sense for you to write. And you would have to do this type of writing for other publications to validate it and blah, blah, blah. And you have to get the agent first. And I learned the whole game plan. Mm-hmm. And then I executed. And, and so the rough game plan is with nonfiction, you get the agent first and the agent's going to sell it to the publishers. So like you're never sending something directly to the publishers. And nonfiction, you're not writing the book first, right? The You're going to get an advance from the publisher once sold, uh, and then you're going to do the primary writing of the book. In fact, it will, in most circumstances, hurt you if you've already written. <laughs> if you've already written. Sure. Yeah. So you're you're trying to sell, well, I guess the agent, first you sell it to the agent, then the agent sells it to the publishers. Yeah, it's much easier to get an agent than a book deal. So the, the thought is, if you can't get an agent, then why would you? So you, you start with the, and also, and the way this works with a good agent is they know all the editors and they have lunch with the editors and they're always just, okay, what projects do you have coming? What are you looking for? Here's one of my authors. That's the way all these deals happen. It's not, you're not emailing a manuscript to a, a slush pile. Yeah. And so, so first of all, the agent takes a percentage and then the publishers, this is where the process comes in. They, they take also a cut that's probably ridiculous. So if you try to reinvent uh, the system, you'll probably be frustrated by the percentage that everyone takes relative to how much bureaucracy and efficiency, yeah. ridiculousness there is in the system. Your recommendation is like, you're just one ant. Stop trying to uh, build your own ant colony. Well, or 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 if you create your own process for how it should work, you're just not going to. The book's not going to get published. So <laughs> so there's the separate question, yeah. the economic question of like, should I create my own, like self publish it or do something like that? But yeah. but putting that aside, there's a lot of people I encounter that want to publish a book with a main publisher, but they invent their own rules for how uh, that works, right? So so then the alternative though is self-publishing and the, the, so the downside, there's a lot of downsides. It's like, it's almost like publishing an opinion piece in the New York Times versus writing your own blog. There's no reason why writing a blog post on Medium yeah. can't get way more attention and legitimacy and long lasting prestige than a New York Times article. But nevertheless, for most people, writing in a prestigious newspaper, quote unquote prestigious, uh, is is just easier. And well, and depends on your goal. So, right. you know, like I push you towards a big publisher because I think your goal is, it's huge ideas you want impact. Right. You're gonna have more impact, you know? But even though in, like actually, so there's different ways to measure impact, right? In the world of ideas. In the world of ideas. Yeah. And also, yeah, in the world of ideas, it's kind of like the clubhouse thing now, even if the audience is not large, the people in the audience are very interesting. It's it's like the conversation feels like it has long lasting impact yeah. uh, among, among the people who in different and disparate industries that are also then starting their own conversations and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, because you have other, so like, self, like self-publishing a book, um, the goals that would solve, you have much better ways of getting to those goals might be part of it, right? So if there's the financial aspect of, well, you get to keep more of it, I mean, the podcast is probably going to crush right. what the, the book's book going to do anyways, yeah. right? Yeah. If it's, uh, I want to get directly to certain audiences or crowds that might be harder through a traditional publisher, there's better ways to talk to those crowds. Right. It, it could be on Clubhouse with all these new technologies. A self-published book's not going to be the most effective way to find your way to a new crowd. But if the idea is like, I want to have a leave a dent in the world of ideas, then to have a vulnerable old publisher, you know, put out your book in a nice hardcover and and do the things they do, 
uh, that goes a long way. And they do do a lot. I mean, there's it's, it's very difficult, actually. To, there's so much involved in, in well, putting they, together a book. They get books into bookstores and all that kind of stuff. All that stuff. And, and from an efficiency standpoint, I mean, just the time involved in trying time. to do this yourself is... is they have a process, right? Like you said, they have a process. They've got a process. I mean, I know like Jocko did this recently, he started his own imprint and I have a couple other, but it's a, it's huge overhead. I mean, if you like, if you run a business and you, uh, so like Jocko is a good case study, right? So he got, you know, fed up with Simon and Schuster uh, dragging their feet and said, I'm going to start my own imprint then if you're not yeah. going to publish my kid's book. Um, but he, what does he do? He runs businesses, right? Yeah. So I think in his world, like I already run, I'm I'm a I'm a partner in whatever in origin and I have this and that. And so it's like, yeah, we can run businesses. That's what we know how to do. That's what I do. I run businesses. I have people. But for like you or I, we don't run businesses. It'd yeah. be terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Or well, especially these kinds of businesses, right? So yeah. I, I do want to launch a business with a very different technology business. It's very, a very different. Diff- uh, very different. Yeah, it's space. very, very different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, this is like, okay, I need copy editors and and graphic book binders and I need to contract with the printer, but oh, the printer doesn't have slots. And so now I have to try to, I mean, it's. I get so, this is, I need to shut this off in my brain, but I get so frustrated when the system could clearly be improved. It's the thing that you're mentioning. Yeah. It's like, this is so inefficient. This, every time I go to the DMV or something like that, you think like, ah, oh, this could be done so much better. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and the same thing is the worry with the, with an editor, which I guess would come from the publisher, like who would, who would, uh, how much supervision on your book did you receive? Like, hey, do you think this is too long? Or do you think the title, like title, how much choice do you have in the title, in the cover, in the presentation and the branding and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, all of it depends, right? So when it comes on the the relationship on the with the editor on the writing, it depends on the editor and it depends on you. Mm-hmm. So like at this point, I'm on my seventh book and I write for a lot of major publications. And at this point, I have what I feel like is a a voice that I've, and a level of craft that I, I'm very comfortable with, right? So my editor is not going to be she kind of is going to trust me and it's going to be more big picture. Like uh, I'm losing the thread here or this seems like it could be longer. Whereas the first book I wrote when I was 21, I had notes such as you start a lot of sentences with so, uh, you don't use any contractions because I've been doing scientific writing where you don't use contractions. Like you should probably use contractions. It was way more, you know, I had to go back and and rewrite the whole thing. Yeah. But ultimately the recommendation, I mean, we, we talked offline and sort of, I was thinking loosely, not really sure, but I was thinking of writing a book and there's a kind of desire to go self-publishing, not for financial reasons. And the but, money can be good, by the way, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's very it's very uh, power law type dist- distributed, right? So so the money on a hardcover is somewhere between one or $2 a book. So the thing is, bucket, yeah. I personally uh, don't- But then you give up 15% to the agent. So yeah. uh, I personally don't care about money as I've mentioned before, but I, I, for some reason, really don't like spending money on things that are not worth it. Like, yeah. I don't care if I get money, I just don't like spending money on the, like feeding a system that's inefficient. It's like I'm contributing to the problem. That's my biggest problem. Right. So you think that you're, you're worried about the inefficiencies of the public? Yeah, the fact that- uh, Like the overhead, moves, the number of people involved or- The, the overhead, yeah. the e- emails again, the, 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 the fact that they have this way of speaking, which I'm allergic to many people, like that's very marketing speak. Like you could tell they've been having Zoom meetings all day. It's like, as opposed to a sort of creative collaborators that are like also a little bit crazy. Yeah, and well, I, I suppose the, the some one, of that is finding the right people. Finding the right people. That's what I would say. I say there's definitely, and maybe it's just good fortune, uh, good fortune in terms of like my agents and editors I've worked with, there's really good people who they see the vision or smart or incredibly literary. And they they, you. Yeah. And, like, and like let's, yeah, I had a great editor when I was first moving into hardcover books, for example. It was my first, you know, big book advance and my first sort of big deal. And uh, he was like a senior editor and and it was very useful, you know? He was like, we had a lot of long talks, right? I was, uh, so th- this was my, my fourth book, So Good They Can't Ignore You, was my first a big hardcover idea book. Um, and we had a lot of talks, like, even before I started writing it just let's talk about books and his philosophy. He'd been in the business for a long time. Yeah. He was the head of the, uh, the head of the imprint. It was useful. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, the other frustrating thing is how long the whole thing takes. It takes a long time. 
Yeah. But I suppose that's, you just had to accept well, that. Well, yeah, I handed in this manuscript for the, the, the book that comes out now, like when this, I handed it in, I mean, over the summer, like during the pandemic. So it's not, it's not terrible, right? And we were editing during the pandemic and I finished it in the spring. 